One of my favorite things about working with Capture One is that the company is always innovating and trying to make our lives easier as photographers. In this video, I want to go over some of the new beta features that they just released because they've honestly changed the way I edit. They've modified my workflow after 10 plus years of doing the same thing. I think they could benefit your workflow no matter what it is that you shoot without having to need multiple pieces of software to do the same thing. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, my name is Sergio and I'm a commercial photographer here in Victoria, BC. I, I know I just did a video on Capture One and I'm not gonna have any overlap from that one. So if you missed that video, you can click the link right over here. But this video is specifically gonna focus on the new beta features that they just released and how powerful I really think they are. Just these few little updates have been so fun to play around these last couple weeks and I just wanted to show you guys what it is that they do. So very first, let's pull up some of these examples here and I'll show you what I mean. One of the first things I think we're all gonna use no matter what kind of photography we do, is gonna be the new AI masking from Capture One. So one of the things I can do here is I can just click the subject button and it will automatically create a separate layer with just the what it thinks the subject is. I know Photoshop does this as well and this is great to see just right into our um, color grading tool, our color grading software. So if I come here and I do refine mask, and display mask, I can see exactly what it is that it selected. And I can see it did a pretty good job. Um, I don't see uh, any issues with the way this has been selected. So what I can do now is I can just decide to increase the contrast and maybe increase some shadow, whatever it is that I need to do, but I can do it just on that part of the image. And it does one button, one click, automatically selected the subject. One of the things you can also do is fine tune that process and fine tune what it is that it's selecting. So what I can do here is I can go over the brush, and I can click the details here, the brush settings, and I can draw on whatever kind of brush that I need over the things that I want to select, and it will automatically select them for me. So what I, what I mean is that I can draw over here, and I can add this to my selection very easily, and now whatever is affecting this will also affect up here. We can also do here, you can click the AI brush, and what this allows you to do is now you can select just sections of the photograph. So I can come in and I can select, you know, just the camera that is in his hands and it does a really good job at understanding what it is that I'm trying to select. It can be just the watch, it can be just his arm, you know, whatever it is that I need to just isolate, it can usually figure it out and if it doesn't, well I can add to it and then I can modify it and I can keep refining it until it's the way or selected what it is that I want to select. How powerful and how smart and intuitive this seems to be is really, really impressive, especially coming from someone who's spent hours and hours and hours on the pen tool, just kind of going in and selecting everything. Even though, you know, most of this is out of focus or there's, you know, the subject isn't facing me. It's not like it's just his eyes and his face. And we'll get into that in the next photo. But even from behind, it's still under understanding what I'm taking a picture of. So I think that's really neat. Next up, if we want, we can unselect this. I'll just select the background. We can just uh, change the color grading on it so that we can just create something that looks way different and much more uh, 3D, let's say, than, than what it does right now. So if I click on Refine Mask, let's just see what it looks like, what it has selected. It looks like it's pretty good. There's missing some sections maybe inside here. So what we can do increase some of that radius and it might bleed in and might it might start bleeding into the first subject so what I can do is either bring that radius back or keep it up and maybe just have the erase tool and I can come in there we go and I can erase the mask from where I don't want it and just like you would in Photoshop you can very simply refine your mask and make it really 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 smart so now if I zoom out I can grab my background layer and I can just reduce the opacity or reduce the exposure, for example, and just create something a bit more dynamic. Obviously this doesn't look good, but just so you can get an idea of how quick and easy it is, it's one button and then change the grading and boom, it's done. And you can very easily select different parts of the image. So let's move on to the next one. This next image here, I'm gonna use it to show you the ability to people mask because the people masking skill is even more impressive than just the subject or the background masking, which because it is able to show you body, face, eyes, nose, and all this has been updated only in the last couple weeks. Capture One sent us a beta update. Let's just say for all intents and purposes, it was three weeks ago. And then they sent us another one about a week and a half later saying, oh, we've refined it even more. So having a yearly subscription or having a monthly subscription or something is you're actually paying for all the time sucks. I know we have a million different subscriptions that we're paying for, but at least they're using it to 
better the software, they're using the time that you are spending on it to at least better the software. I miss the days of spending $1,000 and you could just buy Photoshop outright and you got all of it. But at least they're changing the program and they're making it better and better and better week after week. And it's just really nice to see. It feels good on a receiving end as a photographer. So let's just say if I can, I'm gonna choose just the eyes and I'm going to tell it to select just people and just the eyes of the person. So now it's showing that it only selected the redness or the, the actual eyeball of the client. So if I do, so what I can do is I can either make them a little bit brighter, that looks super strange, but I can make them a bit brighter like that, boom, boom. Maybe decrease a bit of saturation. Obviously this looks a little ghoulish, there we go. And then just like that, I've selected the eyes and I've made them brighter in two seconds. And it's so powerful at being able to just grab whatever it is from the image that you want. And now if I want, I can do something, let's say with just the lips, and I ask it to select again, and it's gonna create a whole separate layer with just the lips. And now, and you know, for us people who are very lazy and bad at naming our layers, I love that it actually tells us what, what it's selecting. All built in, really smart guys, thank you so much. What I'm able to do is just create a separate layer with just the lips, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make them maybe a little bit, well, we probably shouldn't make them brighter, but we should make them a bit more saturated, a lot of bit more contrast and just give them a little bit of life back. And there we go. And now we can go before, after, and we just added some lipstick on our client in three seconds. This is all real time, I'm not cutting this, and you can see how quick and easy it really is. Now what we can do is, since I have the AI mask selected, it can very easily, as you can see, it just, it figures out, you know, sections that I wanna edit, and I can just remove like, the brightness on just this panel of the wall in the background, or I can create like these very specific vignettes where I just increase the, the light on certain parts of the image and decrease it on the other and just have something that's just very easy. You click, point, click, 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 and boom, it's selected. No more pen tool, no more hours and hours and hours retouching a single image. You can do it all in Capture One in 10 minutes. It's amazing. I really think this is taking away another thing that we have to do in Photoshop. And it's just doing it all in the same piece of software. Next up, I wanna go through the hair one over here, which I think is probably gonna be the most uh, difficult to really select. I think of anything that you've ever selected, if you've ever used the pen tool. Hair is, I mean, about as hard as it gets. Uh, you kind of want to have your client preemptively wear a hat or something so that you know that you don't have to Photoshop out the hair or crop out the hair. That's usually a telltale sign of a bad pen tool job. So now if I click the hair mask, we can see where it's selecting, which is, I mean, it's getting these, like you can even see where it's not, like how it's grabbing the hair really well. So what I can do, I can, let's just say, increase my exposure just to, just to get an idea of what it's actually doing. So as you see, it did select a little bit of her face and a little bit around the hair. So what we can do instead is just refine it. And we don't need to necessarily, oh, it doesn't work. It didn't work perfectly the first time, so it's never gonna work. No, we just need to come over here. We grab the erase tool. I can change my eraser settings. Either I make it a little bit firmer, a little bit harder, so I can get the edges just right. Uh, I'll decrease the flow a little bit. And I'm just gonna remove the effect over here. And obviously I can make it a little bit bigger here. Let me just speed it up for you guys a little bit. And boom. When it comes to selecting out hair, it's gonna be hard to get a much quicker sample than this when it comes to selecting out people. So I'm pretty impressed with this ability. Um, so what we can do instead is, I mean, I don't know if I would necessarily just select out hair anyway, but let's say you got a really bad hair light and uh, it's really, really bright. You're trying to tone down some of the, the lighting on someone's light hair. It's taking away the, the information from their face. This is one way you can do that, you know? But I just love the idea of being able to find, select whatever it is that you want in the frame, no matter what it is, whether it's, you know, the leaf or the face or the eyebrows. Capture One will figure it out. Next up, I pulled up here the thumbnail for one of our images from a few weeks ago. I just wanted to show how impressive it is at and how quickly I can edit down this using the background and subject mask selecting once again. So if I click background, it'll figure it out and I want to decrease the shadows, create a little bit more depth in these images. Boom, boom, maybe remove them some saturation. Next, I switch over to subject 
I hit just the camera itself, click like that, boom, just the camera is selected. What I can do is maybe just increase some of the light on it, make it look a little bit more like it was shot with multiple lights and not just one flash. Let's remove some of the, uh, you know what, let's just make, let's make it even more like I, what I actually did on the thumbnail. Um, I'll remove some of the yellow so you don't see my yellow tape. I go back to the image layer and boom, that's kind of what it looks like for the most part. Um, maybe a little bit more fine-tuned than that, but there we go. And just like that, I went from that to that. And it took two seconds, whereas selecting all of that individually would easily take 20 minutes. And I think it's just a nice way to speed up your workflow. And especially if you're not doing the most fine-tuned critical details where you, if it looks good from, you know, at one to one, it'll be good enough. You don't need to have every single pixel be perfect. I think this does a really good job. Next. And yeah, just with the AI select, you can see, I can grab just the piece of tape, just the trigger, you know, just this part, just probably the circle. Yeah. Just the this trigger button. I can select any part of the image with just one click and modify just that. So like here, let's say it's getting a little dark in there. So if I grab another layer and I grab just this little front part of the barrel. Now, there we go, that's the barrel. And now I can increase a little bit of the light because it looks like it's not quite shining in there properly. Make it a bit more contrasty. Boom. And now I went from that to this. Oh, let's just get rid of that. And there we go. I went from that to this. And it, again, it took two seconds instead of 20 minutes. And I think that's just a really powerful way to color grade. Okay, now what we're gonna play around with is the match tool. And I think it's one of the most powerful tools in the update. What we can do with this tool here is I've pulled up a few different uh, reference images that we're gonna use to grade my photos against. And we can try to pick out what it is that makes these images look the way that they do. What I can do with this match look tool, what's so powerful about it is, let's say you come across an image and you really love how it looks, but you don't know how to make it look that way. Capture One's gonna teach you. And what I think is really neat is I can take that image and I can drag it over and it's going to tell me what all of these parts of the image are and how it can, how I can edit my image to make it look like this, even with different lighting conditions. So you can expand these individual uh, subgroups. You can fine tune what it is that you wanted to adjust. But let's just say we use this as the reference image. Um, let's pull up. Uh, let's see here. Let's just see. We're viewing a little bit differently. There we go. So now, if I want this image to look like that, I'm going to hit apply. And now, the, f the grading of this image should look very similar to the grading in this image, which, yeah, it does. And what's really cool about it is I can now go into this image and see how Capture One has, uh, has graded it for me. All of these tools here, all of the adjustment in the color balance and things like that, I can go in and fine tune and readjust and do it myself as well if that's not what it is that I want it to look like. As well, what I can do is, let's say I just undo match look, there we go. I can change the impact of how much that match look is affecting. Now, to me, I think it was a little bit intense. So let's just go, let's hit 85 instead of 100. And now we got a little bit less of that effect coming in. Even more so if you want, I can go, I can hit it back at 100, but I can apply as a new layer. So I just click that and now I hit apply. And if I can come to this image, what I can do is I can open up the layers and add an opacity on the layer, so I can just let it happen a lot or not so much like that. Or what I can do as well, I can add a radial mask, I can add another graduated mask to affect only a certain part of the image, and it should be graded very similarly to the reference image. If we grab, let's say, this photo, I'm gonna drag that back into my match look tool. So now if I, let's say, I'll reset the tool, I'll drag this photo in, and I'm using this as my reference. I don't mind all of the colors and everything. I'm gonna go click apply and boom. And now we got a much similar looking vibe of this, these like red shadows and these uh, unsaturated highlights that we get to see in this image. Now, is that the perfect image for that shot or the perfect reference for that shot? Maybe not. Maybe we can use it on this one instead. Uh, let's go, let's say I reset that image and I hit apply. 
And now we're gonna get these colors on this shot and like, let's be real, how awesome does that look? It looks like it was edited by the same photographer and it took one second. And what I can do is I can just go back in and see how it was edited. I can just, you know, I understand. It's like I can learn how to color grade at the same time as getting images that look like whatever preset you find online. Just save that photo, drag it into your Capture One and be like, edit my photo like this, please. And then also teach me how that was working. Teach me how that happened. It's really like eliminates the need for presets or at least for buying presets. I've said this before on my channel, I will never sell you guys color grading presets. I promise to never do that. I will sell other things eventually, but for now I will never sell color grading presets because I think it is the most useless thing. It's just playing around with sliders and you really don't need to spend money on buying presets. But if you can take a piece of software like this and you can literally create whatever preset you want with the click of a button, that's amazing. Now, furthermore, with creating this preset, that is something that you can do. So now I can take, I can click over here, save custom preset. I can give it a name, I can give it wash, washed out, whatever. And now the next time I open up an image, it should be right there. And I can just click that color grade and it'll be um, uh, usable for any other photo moving forward. Another thing here, let's just do this last one here. This one's a bit different than what I was uh, imagining, but this is an uh, image by Ryan Zalk here in Toronto, or not here in Toronto, but Toronto photographer. And this image is way different than my photo, right? This one's unedited and is warm and just reminded me of the stack of these donuts. So I'm gonna try to do, grade these two together. So let's see, we remove, we reset that tool. I'll drag this image in here. Now if I click here and I click apply, Boom, we get these really warm highlights and these really cool tones in the shadows, even though it's, you know, not super duper work, not super duper cool. We definitely got that color grade and we definitely got that vibe in the same shot, which is really neat for just a one button thing. And again, I can fine tune this. I can tell it to not adjust the saturation or not um, adjust certain parts of the image. And then I can go in and say, oh, I did it like this. Well, maybe I'll do a little bit less in the highlights or a little bit more in the shadows and a little bit less in the highlights or whatever it is that I need to do. And I can fine tune it. I can apply it to a layer. I can remove the opacity. I can just affect one part of the image so strong, so quick, so intuitive. It's a really, really powerful piece of, it's a really powerful new tool. One thing as well, which you can do is you can take um, multiple images as your reference image and you can create, let's say, a look based off of multiple different shots. So let's say I were to select five or six different images from a certain shoot that all have slightly different nuances, but they are all pretty much graded the same way. I select all of them as my reference image and it'll be usually more accurate at copy pasting those adjustments to a new photo because it's taking an average of all of those selected variants. Try it out for yourself guys, this is so powerful. I'm really excited with what this is gonna allow us to do as photographers and what it's gonna allow us to just learn and, and demystify and, and un-gatekeep all of this color grading thing. Like it's just pushing sliders and if Capture One can figure out what those sliders were pushed based off of any basic reference JPEG image or, or whatever other file type, then you're gonna be better photographer from it. And I think that's really, really cool and invaluable. So play around with it. Let me know what you think about it. Like this video if you liked it. Maybe subscribe if you learned something new. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later.